Um, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thanks for coming and joining us today. Um, this webinar is going to be a little bit different than some of the ones we've done in the past um, because today we're going to explore some of the online tools and some of the resources that 2020 has available for you, but I'm not sure everyone knows about. So we're going to kind of walk through a few things. So as always, feel free to ask questions or type in questions. We've got several panelists available to, to help you with, um, with questions and answers. So our agenda for today is we're going to, like I said, we're going to explore the online tools and resources that we have available for all of our users. We're going to take a look at 2020.net. Um, as always, Ashley's going to give us an update on the training schedule and what types of training are available to you. And then I'm going to go talk a, lot, a little bit about our 2020 community, and we at 2020 will be uh, providing more information and, and um, good things for you through the community. So we want to make sure that everybody understands how to do it. So I'm going to go through registering for the community, creating your profile, and then some of the things that you'll find uh, helpful when you're just hanging out in the cube, which is the name for our office um, forum. And then as a wrap-up, I'm going to also show you through the community how you can get involved if you would like to in the 2020 pilot program. At this point, we'll let Aaron talk to you a little bit about um, 2020.net and what's available to you there. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Um, so my name's Aaron Hall. I've worked with customer service for about seven years now, and uh, there's a good chance if any of you have ever called support, you've probably talked to me at least once. Um, so right now I'd like to take a look at 2020.net and show you some of its more useful features. So with 2020.net, you can access uh, various product information for uh, 2020 CAP, 2020 Giza, uh, worksheet, as well as visual impression. Uh, you can get information such as the system requirements, best practices, as well as software downloads and updates. So that you'll, there's always the installation files for the newest version of the software up there. And then also another thing you might go there for is the catalog downloads. And the first thing we want to do is figure out how to get to the website. And the web address is www.2020.net. And you'll see the second note there is you want to use Internet Explorer to access the website. Other browsers don't always work correctly, particularly with the catalog downloads. So it's always best to use Internet Explorer. So once we get into uh, 2020.net in our browser, the next thing we're going to come to is the login page here. Users that have been here before would just use their, their email address along with the password supplied by the website to log in. And there's a little login section right there in the center highlighted by that red box. If you've never been here before, you're going to have to create a new account. So over here on the right, there's a section that says not registered. And that's where you're, you, you'd set up your new account. I'm going to take a closer look at that in the next slide here. So there's that not registered box. And again, this is for first timers if you've never been to the website before. So the first thing is user, all users need to have a 2020.net profile. You can't really get to the information located here without the login. Uh, each profile needs to be associated with a 2020 key. So that's the little USB key that you, you plug into your um, your, your computer, um, and there can only be one profile per license or per key, so you can't set up two people to use the same license number. Um, if you ever get in a situation where somebody has left the company and you no longer, they're, they're no longer using that key and you need to act, activate somebody else with that key, give us a call and support. We can definitely sort that out for you. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is click the word here, which is where that red arrow is pointing on the screen. And that'll bring up a little registration window like you see on the right-hand side there. It's a pretty straightforward form. It's just your name, email address, your product license key, which again is that, that number from your, your little USB key, and it's just a five-digit code without the 2020 on the front of it. So if your number was 2020, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you just put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, the only other tricky thing here is the language defaults to Chinese, so don't forget to change that unless you actually speak Chinese. 
Okay, so once we're logged in, we're going to come to this page here, the home page. And um, let's see here. The first thing I want to point out is up at the top right, there's some navigation buttons. Um, it's kind of hard to see on my screen, but hopefully you can make it out. It has a welcome message with your name. In this case, it says the support admin because I logged in as an administrator here. And you'll see that there's going to be a couple differences because of that. Um, next to the welcome message, it gives you a home link, which will always take you to the page that we're looking at right now. So if you get lost further in the website and you want to get back to here, just hit the home button and it brings you back here. The next button over is the profile button. And that's where you'd go to do things like change your password, update your email address, things like that. Uh, the admin button you won't have, but then that final button, log out, you should have, and that just logs you out of the website. The next item we have here is the kind of like a quick link to the catalog downloads right on the left side here. And uh, basically, you can use this to pick any one of the manufacturers and go directly to the download for that catalog manufacturer, or manufacturer's catalog. Sorry, I said that backwards. And then up at the top here, we have four navigation buttons. So at the top left, there's a support button. You'd use that if you want to access um, information such as the best practices, uh, FAQs, or frequently asked questions. Things like that is uh, generally a documentation type nature. Uh, that's where you go for, uh, under the support section there. The next button over is the manufacturer updates. And that button is going to be used for getting to the catalog or manufacturer's catalog downloads. So it's another way to access the downloads like the box below. The difference is that one's going to give you a list of all of the manufacturers at once. So you can kind of go through the list and, and find the one you want. And kind of, if you're going to do more than one download, it's kind of handy rather than going back to this home page and doing this single selector thing. Um, the next button over is support download. And that's going to be where you go to get your software downloads. So if you're going to install the software on a new computer um, and you didn't have the DVD or you didn't want to use the DVD, you could use the support download link here to get to that as well as in the uh, incremental updates. You know, typically once a year we'll, we'll come out with one software disk and then we'll do uh, three or four software patches or updates throughout the year. So this is where you would come to get those. And then the last link there is a training link, which takes you to some of our training options. Um, I believe there's also some links to that on the cube that Cindy will show you later, but uh, it's just another one of the little tools we have. So the first thing we're going to take a look at here is the support button. So like you see there, the red arrow clicked on support. So the next thing we're going to see is a support page. And uh, this provides docu documentation in the form of best practices, frequently asked questions, user guides. There's also several small how-to type articles. Um, when the support part page first loads, you might see that it goes to the kitchen and bath division. Of so if you're seeing articles for things that don't look like what you need, make sure you select office furniture uh, right there on the left-hand side. Right now it's kind of grayed out, but the red arrow is pointing to it. Uh, that'll make sure that you're looking at the right product uh, documentation. Uh, next we're going to take a look at the manufacturer updates. So again, that arrow is going to move up and click on manufacturer updates. And this is the page that I was talking about before, where it provides a list of all the available manufacturers. So instead of using that little drop-down selector on the first screen, you get the whole list and you can kind of scroll up and down as you will. You don't have to worry about the drop-down window kind of disappearing on you. So it makes it a little bit easier if you're downloading more than one catalog. Uh, basically, on the, here we go. Come on, play with me. Uh-oh. <laughs> A little slide malfunction there, sorry. All right, uh, so on the left-hand side there, we've got the list of the manufacturers, so, so their, their long name. And then next to that, or on the right-hand side, you actually have the download links from, so those little green arrow icons. Basically what you do here is click the arrow icon that corresponds to your version of the software. So if you're drawing with CAP, 
you'd use the cap arrow. If you're drawing with Giza, you'd use the Giza arrow. If you only have worksheet, then you would use the worksheet arrow. And what that's going to do is it's going to take you to this download page. So the first thing you have on the download page at the top here is a notice box. Really, this is only for people who have never installed catalogs, like it's a brand new install, new computer, never had 2020 catalogs on it, or you haven't installed catalogs since 2009. If you fall into that category, then you're going to want to download that little setup web file at the end of the notice. But for most people, they've usually already installed some sort of catalog, so you can, you can usually ignore that notice. The next section here is the actual download links. And you'll see there's three buttons, one for worksheet, one for CAP, and one for Giza. If you're, uh, it's pretty much the same scenario as on the last screen that I showed you. If you're drawing with CAP, you want to do the CAP download. If you're drawing with Giza, you want to do the Giza download. The worksheet download is really for people that only have worksheet. Um, it's actually included in all the other downloads. So if you're a CAP user, there's, there's no reason to download CAP and worksheet. You're already getting the worksheet file. So no use doubling up there. Just download the one for your design software and you should be all set. Uh, down at the bottom of this, there's kind of a cool little note. And I've blown it up here in the center of the screen. So the red box shows you where the note's at, but in the center of the screen is, is kind of a large view and what this is is it tells you the version of the catalog that's up on the website right now. And typically the website will be a little bit ahead of the DVD release. So for example, right now the February discs are up on the web, but they haven't actually shipped. Well, I think they actually they might be shipping pretty, pretty soon here. Um, but most people haven't gotten their February discs yet. So if you need something that's going to be coming out soon, it pays to check the web here and see uh, if, that, if that date has updated and if the new date is available. It might save you a wait, especially if you've got a project waiting on something. Uh, the next section here is down at the bottom. We have a description of what catalog is available in the download. And so if we, if we look, I'm using the demo catalog, which only has one section to that catalog. If you were to download a bigger manufacturer that has several product lines, you'd see all the product lines listed there normally. So, you know, they might have a seating catalog and a systems catalog and so on. Um, so that's, that's where you can tell exactly what you're going to get in that download as far as which product lines. And then next we're going to switch back to the manufacturer update page. And from here, we're going to click on the support download button up at the, the top there. And this is going to take us to a page that gives us the different downloads. Um, the first thing you're going to see there is at the top, there's a bunch of tabs for the different software. So we've got a CAP tab, a Giza tab, a worksheet tab, and a Catalog Express tab. You probably will not see all of these because this is based on what you registered with it for uh, using as far as your, your 2020 license. So if you registered with a CAP license, you're probably only going to see the CAP tab. Um, again, I'm an administrator, so I see all of the tabs. Uh, but just make sure when you're here, you're looking at the tab for your software, although you'll probably only have the one tab um, for whatever software you registered with. The next section down is the new versions section. And this is always going to be the most current version of the software disk. So for right now, it's V2015. Uh, it's probably going to be a little while before we have a 2016 disk. So this is going to be the current version for a little while yet. Um, but if you, again, if you're installing on a new computer or you don't have a DVD drive in your computer, this is where you could get the software to actually install it on the computer. And then below that, we have the service packs link. And I mentioned also earlier that we put out uh, three or four service packs every year in between the different software disks. So this is always going to be the link to the most current service pack. Uh, now, the downloads for the service pack and the software are very similar. So I'm just going to go through an example of the software 
And I think once you see that, you'll be able to figure out how to do the service packs. And let's see here, next screen, where are you? There we go. So this is the download screen. If I was to click on the, the, the new version for the 2020 software, this is the page it's gonna take you to. Right at the top here, we have a brief description of the software. So it'll tell you the version, the release date, uh, and some information about it. And then below that, actually a little bit below that, there's a, a section called file name, and right now it lists a file called 2020 commercial software 2015.zip. That's actually the, the thing you wanna click on to start the software download. The reason I mention this is if you look at the product options box above that, there's a download button there that will kind of confuse people because they'll click on that and all it really does is scroll you down to where the red box is on the page. So they think that's gonna start the download, but really you wanna click inside where that red box is to actually start the file download. Uh, one thing I should mention about that download too, it's probably gonna ask you what you wanna do with the file. Always choose to save your files from 2020.net especially these large ones, because if something goes wrong and you need to do it again, you'll have to start the download all over again if you don't choose the save option. Whereas if you get it saved, we have a couple more options to try and troubleshoot why it wasn't working for you. Uh, so the next thing here is the instructions down the bottom, actually the instructions and benefits. Instructions just briefly walks you through how to install this file. And then the benefits gives you a little overview of what the update actually changes. So for example, in this one, it added AutoCAD support for uh, AutoCAD 2016 and changed some of the branding on the software. Next time you find yourself looking for product information or software updates or catalog downloads, remember to check out 2020.net. There's always stuff there. And you know, if you can't find it there, feel free to give us a call and support. We can help you out too. Hello everyone, this is Ashley Stevenson and I'll uh, go through here really quick just to talk about what's, what's coming up for training. Uh, we have a number of virtual classes available right now. Um, to see our full calendar, this is just a snippet, uh, but to see the full calendar you can go to 2020spaces.com slash training slash commercial and that will show you all of the training for all the software we have. <clears throat> Be sure to um, search, there's a search function once you get out there um, to search for the specific software, whether it's 2020 Giza, 2020 CAP, 2020 Worksheet, or 2020 Visual Impression. That will help to limit the search for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to commercial.training at 2020spaces.com. And I'll hand it over to Cindy. Thanks, everyone. What I'm going to do today, I think most of you know me by now, I'm the product manager for all of our office products. So what I'd like to do today is show you um, our new forum capabilities. Our forum is part of the 2020 community, and you may have seen um, some of our publications and some of our information about the community, but the community at its core is meant to be for you guys, and it's meant for you to share information with each other as well as with us. So what I'm going to do today is kind of show you, through, show you how to register for the community and then how to, um, what I call hang out in the cube, how, are the, how to do some common things that we want to uh, be able to do for the cube. So a couple of things I'm going to show you is how, how to register, how to update your picture, um, how to get to know your profile and all the uh, things that that gives you. Um, I want to show you how to find information in the cube. We are now using the cube as a way to um, provide information to you um, for software releases, training information. I use it as a product manager try, to try to glean information from our, uh, from our customers. I'm going to show you how to effectively post items in the cube, um, including inserting pictures into your post and inserting hyperlinks in your post. And then the last thing I, I want to do is show you a little bit about how um, you are able to sign up and, and participate in our 2020 pilot program, which basically gives you some pre-release information um, for software and the ability to give us early feedback. 2020 community is run off of our web page. So this little button here, which might be a little bit hard to see, is, is a crowd of people. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to register. So there's a couple of ways to get there. Let me also show you 
uh, this page here in our 2020 community. This also has a register button and it'll take you to the same place. So I'm going to click register here. And I'm going to register a, sort of a fake account here. So my, uh, my account name is going to be uh, Debbie Design. And I need to put in an email address. So I'm going to put in an email address for Debbie Design. I choose a password. So I'll put in my password for Debbie. And there's a question mark here that says I'm not a robot. This just helps us, uh, helps protect our site from spammers. So I'm going to click this. You may or may not see the type of question that I'm seeing here where it's asking you, it's asking you to provide input to verify that you're not a robot. And then here in profile details, you want to put in your name. So in this case, it's Debbie Designer. And you're going to want to select all the tools that you use. So if you hit the control key here, I can select all of our office tools. So I'm going to, I'm going to select um, CAP, Giza, Visual Impression, and Worksheet. And then you can put in information about your company, whatever your company name is. This is not uh, required, but you can put in your company name, your company location, and you can also put in your company website if you want. And this part here, this market region, is, is kind of important. Um, we're continuing to build more and more things um, off of this login and your login to the community. So one of the things you want to be able to tell it is where you're located. So it's very important that in here you go in and you select the United States or Canada or wherever you're at to make sure you get the uh, right information. And then I'm going to click sign up. It now tells me I've successfully created my account. So I can't really use it until I activate it. So I'm going to go over here now to my Gmail account where I see I have an email that's been sent to me allowing me to activate it. So if I click on that email and I scroll down, it tells me, it welcomes me to the community and says to complete the activation of your account, click here. So I'm going to click there. And now it's taking me into the community. It says your account's active and now I can log in. So I'm going to log in here in my password. Again, no spam. Okay, so now I'm logged in and now I'm an active member of the community. So the first thing I wanted to do as a member of the community is um, I want to go into the queue which the Q, you'll see some other forms there, and there are other forms there for our products, or sorry, for all of the 2020 products. So you want to make sure you, collect, you select the cube, um, which is specific to Office. And the first thing I'm going to do is, all, when you first log in, you get this little monster um, profile picture. So I'm going to go in and click on Debbie Designer. And in here, this is where my profile is, and this tells me everything that, about what I've, how I've registered myself. So basically my name, the products that I use, that we answer during registration, and, and my company name if I put that in there. So one of the things I want to do is change my profile picture because I want a real picture in there. So I'm going to go ahead to change my profile picture, and then I can select the file that contains my picture. And I have, I have a designer picture here. It's just a cartoon So I'm going to open up and it brings it in, and then it allows you, it'll give you an, an idea of what your image is going to look like, but it also has, gives you the ability to resize and crop your image. So if I just drag this down, um, I get a nice image. Um, typically, people will put their pictures in here, uh, but I can put that in there. And now you'll see, now my profile actually shows a photo. Uh, most of the people that have registered to date still have our little monster pictures in there, so I wanted to, to show you how to do that. I also wanted to show you a little bit about the information that's available to you from the profiles. Um, we have things like nat, um, notifications, which is going to be empty now, but um, once you begin working and subscribing to our di the threads in the, di in the forum, you'll get more notifications of things that you need to watch. Um, things, it'll also um, show you if you've 
made any forum, forum topics, this is a quick way for you to navigate and find the things that you've, uh, the topics that you've created, or if you've done any replies, um, or things that you're subscribed to, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then your settings is a, is a place where you can um, change, change things about your account. It says delete account. You want to be careful and not do that. But you can also change your password in here. So that's a quick way to, to see all that information. So I'm going to go back to the cube now. One of the things that I wanted to show you, I actually can't do on, a, on this account that I created just because it's kind of a dummy account. It's not a real account. Um, so I'm going to go over on my machine and I'm going to show you what, um, sorry, in a different browser, I'm actually logged in as myself in a different browser. And what I wanted to show you is the subscribe button at the top of the cube. If I subscribe to the cube, what happens is it'll send me an email every time there is a new topic in the cube. And that's really good so you can keep an idea of what is happening. Um, also, if you get, get into a, let's say I, I'm going to get into a thread here, you also have a subscribe button. So that's a good way to keep, um, keep abreast of what's happening in each one of the forums or each one of the threads that you're participating in. So subscribe is something you, you want to um, remember to know how to do. Okay. So I'm going to go back out here for a minute. Actually, I'm going to go back over to my other, back into Debbie's account. And I'm going to just look down here for, okay, we've got the 2020 commercial software is available. So I'm going to click on that. Actually, hang on, let me go back for a minute. One of the things I want to show you here is we have a, a pretty um, substantial search. If I wanted to search for, I'm going to search for Inquiring Minds. Inquiring Minds is a post that I do quite often when I want to get information from, from the field. So I want to see uh, who's using what or how they're using it or maybe just a general question about what's happening in the industry. We'll put it under Inquiring Minds. So I can search and, I, and it will return all of the Inquiring Minds um, questions that we've asked to date. Um, another thing that you can do is I'm going to go down here to the Commercial Software 2015.3 release. Um, we're typically announcing uh, when the software is released on the community as well. And actually, let me see if I can make this just a little bigger, I think. There you go. That should be easier to see. Um, one of the other things that we have is most posts, let's see, at the bottom have topic tags. And if, when I make a post, if I tag the post appropriately, it's easy to go in and um, select things. So typically when I make a post about the release being available, I will tag it with CAP, give a visual impression worksheet, release, and maybe software release. So if I click on software release, it will actually return to me all of the software release messages that have been made on the forum. So real quick, you can navigate in here and find a lot of the things that you're looking for. So I'm going to go back, back up to the, well, I'm going to go back to the cube here. And let's say that um, you want to make a post in the cube. Um, there's a couple of, kind of what I'll call best practices for making a post. The first thing you want to do is go down to uh, the bottom of the page where it, it allows you to create a new topic. So I'm going to create a topic uh, called best practices for posting in the cube. Okay? That's my title. The next thing is I'm, in this case, I want to copy and paste some text that I have in this Word document over here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy all my text. And then when I go back to the cube, I want to make sure that the, this tab, the text tab, is um, highlighted before I paste it in. What happens is when you paste things from PowerPoint or Word, they have some formatting information involved in there as well. So I want to make sure that when I, um, when I post things that um, the formatting is kept. So I'm going to take this over here and I'm going to post it. 
or I'm going to, sorry, paste it. Uh, now when I go to the visual tab, I can see everything. The next thing I want to be able to show you is how to insert an image into your post. Right now in the community, we don't really store pictures, so you can't really upload your own pictures to the community. But what you can do is there are several image um, hosting sites on the web. Um, this one that I'm going to show you right now is called Image Safe. There's also Imgur, I-M-G-U-R. Um, I think it's Imgur.com and Photo Bucket. You, these are free hosting sites where you can upload an image and it'll give you a URL that then you can post it or that you can add to your post in the community. So I'm going to browse for a file and let me pick a I'm going to pick a rendering that I've done and I can upload that. And what it does is when I then click click on the image, it gives me a URL that will take me back to that image. So I can copy that and I'll go back to my community post here. And I can click on the link. And when I click on the link, it allows me to add, I can paste the URL here and then add a bit of text to click on to get that. I can also say open this link in a new window or a tab, um, which I want to collect or I want to click on now and then add the link. So that actually adds the link in the required HTML so that that will be in my post. So, and I'm, I'm going to then set up some topic tags. So let's call this best practices. You have control over what your tags are, but it might be um, things like if you want to use a product name, you can put those in there as well. So I'm going to say best practices is a topic and um, let's say the cube. Whatever whatever those tags are, that um, it will group tagged items together. The other thing that I want you to notice here is this notify me of follow-up replies via email. If you go out here and ask a question, for example, and you want to know who is answering your question, you can click this and it will actually send you an email every time someone replies to your post. And that's a good reminder so you don't have to log in um, every time just to see what's there. So I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say submit. Now you can see that um, I've now um, created that post and I, I now have, if I click on my picture, it will actually open in a new window the picture that I uploaded. So this is real handy if you're going to be sharing things on the community and you want to share a screenshot or a rendering or something like that. The other thing that you can do, um, you don't want to delete posts. Um, posts are kind of like conversations. So once you put something out there, it's kind of there. And someone could have read it in the time that it's taken you to determine that you want to edit it. So it's really best to edit your posts, not delete them. And then that's really easy to do once you have a post. Uh, there's an edit button, so I can go into edit. And if you noticed in that some of these uh, URLs really didn't carry over. So I can do the same thing to make these live links as well. I can select image safe and hit the link button. So it fills in the text for me, and then I can take the image safe uh, location and I can put that in the URL and I can add that link. And then um, another good practice is below, at the bottom of your post, you can say update, uh, link was not active in original post. So that, that tells the users that there's been a change to that post. So then when I submit that again, you can see that now the image, image safe link is live, looks like a link. And I have a little update here. There's two ways to, to edit a post. You can either edit it directly in the post like I just showed you now, or you could put a comment in one of the reply comments saying that you made a change to it or whatever. It really depends on the length of time uh, between your first post and, and um, the changes that you're making for it. Okay, so one last thing I want to be able to show you, I want to talk a little bit about our pilot program. And um, we 
have begun, 2020 as a whole has a pilot program where you can go in and if you'd like to be part of the pilot program in the forums, you can see a pick called 2020 pilot programs. You can go in there. And the first, uh, the first thread tells you about the pilot program information. So this is an opportunity really to put your name in a pool of people that we as product managers pull from when we're looking for someone to test um, and look at our, our product before it's released. So if you click on pilot program information here, at the bottom of the, uh, at the uh, top of the list, there's something called what's it all about. So if you click on that, it'll say, you know, if you, we'd really like you to participate and help us with this if, you, if you're interested in it and there's a place for you to sign up. So if you click on sign up today, um, there's some information that you provide here. So um, basically you need to be registered, which um, you're likely already registered if you're using the community. You put your email in and then you choose what products you'd like to participate in. And I, you know, largely this is an office audience, so you wanna, you'd wanna pick the office products that you would be interested in taking a look at. And then we kinda ask you to rate your experience. What happens here is we keep your name in a pool and then when we have a new test um, or a new pilot being put together for a product, you're the first people that we come to. So it doesn't, right now we're not actively running a pilot, but this gives us a nice pool of people uh, that may be interested to enroll. So you can um, go in and, and uh, check this out when we're offline. Just to follow up, which one should you use? Um, if you're, you should use 2020.net if you're looking for catalog downloads, uh, software downloads, technical support, and right now we have a knowledge base on 2020. That knowledge base is likely to move to the cube in the future. Um, if, if you, in, in 2020 community, you're looking to have discussions with your peers, with other people, other users, we will be um, producing webinar, sorry, webinar information there. We conduct our pilot programs from there and there's gonna be a lot of other future uses for it. Uh, it's a good place if you wanna know how to do something. Um, a lot of times your peers will answer those questions, um, you know, as well as staff from 2020. We keep a, a very close eye on it. So um, just wanna say thank you for your time today.